Hello! It's been over four months since I have done an unboxing video, and as you've probably guessed, the reason for that is because I've been turning down like 99.9% .9 of everything offered to me because I don't have any space to store it. Uh, nevertheless, what you're about to see um, are some donations that I did accept over the last few months because there are things that I actually need to use in upcoming videos, and um, probably about half of what you're going to see is actually stuff that I agreed to accept a long time ago. It's just now trickling in. So anyway, uh, let's dig in. The first box here came in at the end of October, and it was from Sarah Sullivan. And lo and behold, it was another C64 Mini. This shouldn't be a huge surprise for you because uh, I already did the episode on this. This was the North American version of the Mini, which worked quite a bit better for me than the European version. The next box was from Jed, and uh, I'm sorry I don't know how to pronounce that last name. At first, uh, it would appear to be a box of useless discs, and I think some of these are, as I can't even tell for sure what they are. Uh, however, the main attraction is that these are copies of the Hyperion system discs, which I'll need in order to do a proper demonstration on that computer once I get it fixed. So uh, thank you, Jed. Moving along, uh, this next box is from Scott Carter. Okay, so uh, what we have here are some high FD floppy disks, and I'll forgive you if you've never heard of them, because <laughs> I've never heard of them either. In fact, he sent me more than just the disks, but uh, also a drive that can read and write to them. And uh, one of the things I find interesting about this drive is that it has connectors for both floppy and hard drive on the back. Um, okay, uh, thank you, Scott. Next up, we have another box here from The Future Was 8-Bit. And uh, what we have here is a video game called Rodman. I think what makes this one interesting is that it runs on so many different systems, as you may notice looking at the bottom there. On the back, it appears to have screenshots from various different systems. Ah, and it appears to be on multiple cassettes, which makes sense. Each cassette has a few different versions on it. Uh, so this one here has the Spectrum and Amstrad versions. And here we have a bunch of other ones. And this is the one I'd probably use since it has all the Commodore versions on it. Anyway, uh, neat. I'll try this out later. Moving along, we have a box here from Ton Neckers. I hope I said that right. Um, the customs label says it contains six computer disks. Okay. So these aren't ordinary computer disks. Uh, these are very early iOmega Bernoulli cartridges, and each of these giant disks holds exactly 20 megs of data. And these predate the zip disk, of course. Neat. I love uh, collecting various old types of media. Uh, thank you, Ton. Next up, this is a package from Hatchet Book Group, and uh, I think this is a drop shipment from somebody else. Uh, let's open it and find out. Ah. So uh, what we have here is the Nostalgia Nerds Retro Tech. <laughs> yeah, so it talks a bit about each and every computer and game console from the past. Neat. It's a really well-made hardback book. Um, I'll have to sit down with it sometime and uh, browse through it. Uh, thank you to the Nostalgia Nerd. Next up, I have a package here from Giants Software. And it says it contains a video game. A big surprise from a software company. And what we have here is Farming Simulator C64 Edition. Oh, and it comes on a cartridge, even better. So yeah, I look forward to reviewing this. In fact, I'll give you a little hint, uh, you're going to see this sooner rather than later, like possibly in the next video on my channel. Inside, it comes with what looks like a floppy disk, but it's actually not. What it actually is, is just a cleverly designed CD sleeve, uh, which has the PC version of the game on it. And last but not least, here's the cartridge. Very neat. Next up is a big old heavy box, and this is from Mike Sheridan. I love the Commodore 64 font used on the label. And what we have here is a box of floppy disks. And uh, these are double-sided, double density, so they should work for Planet X3, which is one of the reasons I accepted this donation. There's probably a couple of hundred disks here. Of course, I'll have to make ten times this many, but uh, it's good to have extra disks. Uh, there were also a few other surprises in the box, including this note. And uh, here's something I haven't seen in a while. Brand new boxes of three and a half inch disks. Unfortunately, these are high density, so I can't use them for Planet X3. Oh, and at the bottom, I found this certificate. I say bottom, but I think I opened the box from the bottom, so this was probably the first thing I was supposed to see. Uh, anyway, thank you, Mike. 
Moving along, this box here is from Augie. <laughs> I have no idea how to say that. Um, here's a note. Sorry, this is ridiculously late. Uh, so it appears this box was showing up about 10 months after we discussed it. Ah, uh, yes, an Etch a Sketch animator. Unfortunately, somebody else already sent me one of these a few months ago. Uh, however, this one looks like it's in better shape, and at least in the box anyway. Um, I still haven't gotten around to doing a video on this yet, though. Anyway, uh, thank you very much. Next up, we have a little box here from Indonesia. It's from Eiffel Valentino. This is another one of those covered in duct tape, so I have no idea where to even cut. So I'll just take a guess. Okay, uh, this is odd. <laughs> this isn't packing peanuts. It uh, looks like styrofoam that somebody broke into tiny pieces. Okay. Uh, looks like we have some Game Boy cartridges, and here's a little note. Let me dig the foam out of the cartridge ends here. Okay, so what have we got? Uh, this is a Sega Game Gear cartridge. I'm not familiar with Pango. And uh, we have a 6-in-1 game of some kind. Uh, Spider-Man, Batman, Power Rangers, and Tiny Toons. Okay, well, thank you, Eiffel. Alright, next up we have a box from Matt Bartlett. And uh, what do we have here? Okay, if you're thinking this is a mouse, <laughs> you're wrong. Uh, this is uh, called a QCAT, and they were all the rage back in the 1990s. It's a barcode scanner, actually, and these were designed to read barcodes and open a corresponding website, but uh, they never really caught on despite huge hype and investment. Uh, you'll probably be seeing this again, so uh, thank you, Matt. Next up, I have a box here from PenguinNet. <laughs> Okay, well, let's see what mystery it contains. Read me. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, uh, this is my review copy of a new game called Ricky and Vicky. Here we go. This is a uh, brand new game for the Atari 7800. I never thought I'd see the day. And the box design is spot on accurate for the console. In fact, if I didn't know better, I'd think I was looking at an original game from the era that maybe I'd just never heard of. <laughs> but uh, also in the box uh, was another little surprise. These are converters to allow you to use NES controllers on your Atari 7800. Of course, they work on an entirely different principle, but uh, presumably that's why there's a little microcontroller on the board to translate for us. Now let's have a look at the screenshots. It's uh, sort of some sort of platform game. Here's the user manual. Okay, this is not a book, rather it's one of those fold-out guides that I really hate, <laughs> but that's okay. Looks like you get two complimentary tickets to Misery Land. Lovely. And um, here's the actual cartridge, and uh, being this is translucent, I'm guessing this is a brand new cartridge design. Uh, they could probably reuse the same design for the 2600 cartridges, who knows. Anyway, I'm looking forward to reviewing this, expect to see it shortly. Moving along, and uh, we're almost done here. Uh, this is a box from Robert Vanetta. Alright, uh, I've been waiting for this. This is the speech and sound program pack for the Tandy Color Computer. Let's open it up and have a look. Okay, to start with, it comes with a nice manual. Let's flip it over here. And yep, here's the cartridge. What's this? Uh, it comes with a warning, uh, remove before operating. Yeah, I think you'd have to be pretty thick to try to stick this in a computer with that cardboard over the end. And here it is. Um, I look forward to showing this in a future video. So uh, thank you, Robert. And here comes the climax to this episode. It's not every day I receive a big wooden box. <laughs> this is from Dan Radke. So um, I tried various methods to get the top off this thing. Nothing seemed to be really working. But then I realized it said, open this side, and while I originally thought that the arrows meant to open from the top, I realized that he meant to literally open it from the side, so I tried prying it open until I realized that this side is held on with screws, not nails like the other side. But then I realized the darn screws were using a square bit, uh, which I had to run to the store and buy. So uh, now, hopefully, I can make some progress here. And about 20 screws later, here we go. And uh, let's see what we've got here. Uh, well, this is certainly an interesting packing job. But uh, from what I can tell, everything's in one piece and nothing's broken. Here's the monitor, and now the computer. And the last item is the keyboard. And here's a little note from Dan. Now, I'm not going to do a full restoration video since this thing is in such good condition, but I am going to clean it off a little bit. So if you're wondering what this is, um, it's a Commodore PC-20, which is one of these series of IBM compatible or MS-DOS computers made by Commodore. I've been trying to get one of these for a while. Okay, so time for the smoke test. 
lo and behold, it works. It appears the hard drive is dead, but uh, that's no surprise. I tried starting Planet X3, but it doesn't seem to want to load for some reason. I decided to take it apart right quick, and I did discover that the battery has leaked onto the motherboard. So I'll need to remove this battery and clean that up. And so that about wraps it up for the unboxings. Um, I'm probably going to spend the next couple of days working on this uh, Commodore PC-20 and trying to get it uh, fixed up for the documentary that I'm going to do about it. In the meantime, I've got some other videos that I'm partially done with that you're going to be seeing in a week or so, and I think you're going to like those. So uh, as always, uh, thanks for watching and stick around for the next episode.